to the New Year's edition, the first show of the new year of The Road Less Traveled with Gary L. and Gigi's Boo on Real Liberty. <laughs> Real Liberty. You have Me- trouble class saying I that. told you I can't talk. Uh, <laughs> Hillary done some. Anyway, welcome to reallibertymedia.com, The Road Less Traveled with Gary L. and Gigi's Boo. Notice that we had a little bit of a new intro, and that is called The Sky of Our Ancients. And it's another Kevin McLeod piece. So if you want, if you like the music that you hear, and if you plan on doing some shows or developing a, a vlog or a podcast, you can look at Incompetech. That's Incompetech.com. That's Kevin McLeod's site. He has oodles and oodles of royalty free music that you can download and chop and splice and dice and vegetize however you want to. If we want to set it up. And he's happy as long as you just give him attribution. That's all he asks for. Anyway, hi, Gigi's Boo. How are you this new year? Oh, I'm doing fine. Can't complain except, gosh, have mercy God we in a deep freeze. Woo! It is cold on the East Coast, I tell you. Yes, indeed. And it's actually, that's part of what's dictating a slight change in and bearings on the road less traveled. We're, we're going to take up a little bit of a different track, similar to some things we've done in the past, I guess, but it's a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit more focused, and there's some reasons that I'll get into here shortly. I want to say hello to everyone in the chat room at reallibertymedia.com. Got a whole bunch of people over here. There's Cowboy Tech is come in and said hello hey cowboy tech and java doctor said hello and grimner's here and i don't know who else gooberzilla has just posted a link don't know if he's listening or not but here we are and there's moose girl showing up in the chat room not sure if she's here or not i think she has work she does on sundays she actually does a radio an actual a real honest to goodness radio show i believe there locally where she is, and Kate is here, and Asmo, Betsy, Chalstony, Chloe, Ibe Don C, Java Doctor, JJ, Wanataco, Meisterbrow, Rain, Rob Works, Trust No One, Beetle, Hello Hal, Behind the Woodshed, he was just on from 3 to 5, another great show, then reallibertymedia.com, you can't miss it out, miss out on it, blah, <laughs> Colfax, Dakota, Dima, Frumpy, Gigi's Boo, who's that? I think that's the bear. And Gooberzilla and Kozu and Moy and Poxify and Pawn Sauce and Sock Puppet Teddy and Phantom 2. Well, here we are. So, it is cold, Gigi's Boo. What are you, what are you doing about all that? Oh, I'm just trying to stay warm. It's cold. I'm telling you. Pipes are freezing. People's heat's going out. It's It's pretty rough, but kind of got to make up for those things you know you kind of have to stay ahead and be prepared and we're Mm -hmm. going to talk about that tonight Mm -hmm. we are we're actually some of the direction we're going is back to the preparedness right and but a little more focused and not quite so generalized as we have done in the past but before we do that you know way back at home in the mountains it's cold back there now they had some seriously cold weather it wasn't too cold to keep elvira from going to the lawyer's office to request a divorce yeah, she went to J. Patrick Hottentot's office, and so she wants to file a divorce against her husband, so uh, Mr. Hottentot is collecting the background information. He asks, he asks her, well, what are your grounds for divorce? 
And she says, well, we have three acres. And he said, no, what I mean is, does he beat you up? And she said, no, I get up around 6.30 and he sleeps until 7. <sighs> so attorney hot and tight, he's getting a little frustrated. And he said, look, lady, tell me this. Do you have a grudge? She just very confidently looks at him and says, no, we have a carport. Mm, at this point, the lawyer's lost his patience. And he says, look, lady, why do you want a divorce? And she says, because he can't hold an intelligent conversation. Oh, <laughs> oh boo-boo bear. <laughs> That's about as bad as I heard. Uh, some people talking that were up, up around our home place, and they said, somebody said, jeet it, no, to jeet. And somebody said, no, chew. Okay, they spelled to jeet, J-E-E-T, jeet. And no, Jew, J W. That's so, right. That kind of goes along with it, don't it? You? It does. <laughs> you know, nothing wrong with that. People know what they're talking about up there, even if you don't. But anyway, after starting out with a little levity in the new year, let's uh, move on to other areas. You know, I don't know really how to talk about this with any time, any kind of lightness. I think the fact of the matter is, as much of the hoorah that we hear going on, and all the distractions and fake news and all the different things, there are some very serious issues facing us that we will probably experience within the next seven years. Within the next, I didn't say after seven years, I said within the next seven years. There are a lot of indicators and there is information out there that pretty much addresses some of this. And it's not a real pretty picture. For example, we have lots of indicators and there have been articles written since 2013 about the decreasing solar activity. And this continues to go on. It kind of plays right into the weather because as we go along, you'll see that there are a number of indicators to support the idea that we may be heading into a record-breaking solar minimum. So there are lots of impacts that that can have, especially on your uh, farming, on your gardening, particularly those things. Mm-hmm. There are articles such as this one from the New Scientist, and this is from 2013, November 2013, that talks about solar activity heads for the lowest low in four centuries. Now, back in the four centuries ago, there was an event called the Maunder Minimum, and that coincided with the worst European winters of the Little Ice Age, a period that that lasted centuries when several regions around the globe experienced unusual cooling. Tree ring studies suggest it cooled the northern hemisphere by up to 0.4 degrees Celsius. Doesn't seem like a lot, but when you start talking about growing crops, that can have a fairly significant impact. Can it, Gigi's boo? Yes, it can. Yes, it can. And it's re- we do this by way of of giving a little background as to why we're changing the direction that we're uh, that we've been going in. In addition to that, other articles. Um, I mean, these are reputable reputable sites. Astronomynow.com makes the statement that diminishing solar activity may bring new ice age by 2030. Okay, that's from 2015. So this isn't new news. This is this has been in the public domain for some time. And it talks about the arrival of intense cold similar to the one that raged during the Little Ice Age, which froze the world during the 17th century and the beginning of the 18th, is expected in the years 2030 to 2040. A conclusion presented by... Uh, Northumbria University professor V. Zarkova during a national astronomy meeting in Wales. 
So you can read this yourself. Talks all about it. If you missed it in 2015, we'll bring it to your present attention. Okay. So enough. I mean, there are a million articles that discuss this. And feel free to research. And I think if you, if you ignore it, it's your own peril. Now, taking this... You know, we've, we've heard about the perfect storm. There was actually a movie by that name. And uh, for some time now, I have been doing research and gathering information. And a very reputable source, and I use the word reputable uh, academically because it is a source close to the Rockefellers. And this is a source that was developed via the dark web. And here's a statement from a report. The key element to understand the process that the United States will enter in the upcoming decade is migration. In the past, especially the 20th century, the key factor that allowed the USA to rise to its colossus status was immigration with the benefits of a demographic expansion supporting the credit expansion and the brain drain from the rest of the world benefiting the states. The collapse of the Western financial system will wipe out the standard of living of its population while ending Ponzi schemes such as the stock exchange and the pension funds. The population will be hit so badly by a full array of bubbles and Ponzi schemes that the migration engine will start to work in reverse accelerating itself due to the ripple effects, thus leading to the demise of the United States. This unseen situation for the states will develop itself in a cascade pattern with unprecedented and devastating effects for the economy. Job offshoring will surely end with many American corporations relocating overseas, thus becoming foreign corporations. Again, that comes from a source very close to the Rockefellers. So I would recommend people pay attention to that because the bottom line of their prediction is that there will be an 85% reduction in the population in the United States and a 95% reduction in GDP in the United States within the next seven years. Okay, so what happens when you combine this perfect storm of the collapse of Ponzi schemes and a decreased solar activity, colder weather? What happens? Well, one of the things that's already been changed, with regard to the weather anyway, is that the USDA has altered its plant hardiness zone map. And if you hadn't heard about that, that was fairly newsy about a month or so ago. And so it's a very handy site to look at. And you can, uh, there's their interactive maps and so forth. And I've dropped in the chat room. Of course, all of this will be available on the blogcaster on reallibertymedia.com. Okay. So this is serious stuff. I mean, usually we're trying to kind of light, and I'm not one to go too far off a deep end unless it's well supported. So, you know, you can ignore it at your own peril, as I said before. Another thing that is interesting that has arrived in the news of late is this press release from DARPA, of all people, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. Those people that live in the black world, for the most part, except they've very recently released a challenge with an aim to revolutionize underground capabilities. And in part, it says, underground settings are becoming increasingly relevant to global security and safety. Read between the lines. Rising populations, which we know is not true, and that can be demonstrated, and urbanization are requiring military and civilian first responders to perform their duties below ground in human-made tunnels, underground urban spaces, and natural cave networks. 
recognizing that innovative enhanced technologies could accelerate development of critical life-saving capabilities, DARPA today announced its newest challenge, the DARPA Subterranean Challenge. I highly recommend that you read this, study it, and especially interpret the language. It's heavy, heavy, heavy with innuendo. There's a lot to be a lot to be seen there. With regard to all that, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, uh, we're planning we're working up a documentary that will address a lot of this. Okay, and I'm I'm kind of I'm a little bit close hold on some of the source information because quite frankly I don't want it to disappear. Yeah, it's that unusual, put it that way. Anyway, with all this in mind, it's, it's enough doom and gloom for our New Year's show to start with. Well, how about some remedies? What are some What are some things that we believe people, by and large, can do to soften the impact, assuming they plan on staying around? Hopefully, most people here in the chat room will plan on staying around. What are some of the things? Well, Gigi's Boo has put together a number of things that folks might consider doing. And some of the things we've talked about before, but some of these things are kind of new and, like I said, a little more focused. So, Gigi's Boo, you want to share some of what you've come up with? Sure. We've talked about prepping before. And uh, the first thing, what do you think that you need to prep, first of all, of anything? Anybody got any ideas? Well, the first thing that you're going to prep, the first thing you're going to do is make sure you've got a water source. Now, you can do this. You can have a water source uh, at a river, at a creek, at a spring, whatever, or you can bottle up your water. You can put it in gallon milk jugs. Now, with water, to keep it fresh, you have to put a little bleach in it, a little chlorine. One quart of water needs two drops of bleach. A half a gallon of water needs four drops. A gallon about eight. Five gallons about a half a teaspoon. And 55 gallons 5.5 teaspoons. There's a lot of things out on the market that you can buy. You can buy the survival straw. You can get water purifiers. Uh, we've got some survival straws. And I think you can go to any, any if it's a mud hole, you put it down there and the water you get out of it is going to be completely clean. I always cringe a little bit on that because I'm thinking, mm, I know they know what they're talking about, but still, I always look and make sure. So water's number one. All right, another way that you can pray up is storing food but if you don't have the money to buy if you've got a piece of land you can even plant a garden right now right now is the time for a winter garden um onions and sh shallots are really popular with people because they're seasoned and they're and, and it makes food taste so much better uh garlic you need to kind of put it in in the autumn, but it will come through right on right on as you need it. Spring onions, spinach. Everybody needs greens. I want you to remember that a lot of people years ago simply died because even though they had something to eat, they didn't have the right things to keep them alive. So that's very important that you have the right things to keep you going. You can uh, grow broad beans in the winter, peas, asparagus. Now, let me say something about asparagus. you got to have plenty of space for it, and it takes a couple of years uh, to get it established. But once you get it established, it's going to grow like wildfire, and you get about 25 spears per bunch that you grow. Now, down around the south, we, we sow a lot of turnip greens. 
the turnip grains grow in the, and you eat the grains. You can also eat the turnips. Uh, tur- everybody thinks about turnips being cooked and they're bitter. I can cook them and they're out of this world. You just put a little sugar in it. I cook mine in um, low-fat chicken broth with a little pepper. You could add a little garlic to it if you wanted to. A little onion if you want to. But put your little pinch of sugar in it. And it won't make them so strong. Be sure that the sugar you use, though, is pure cane sugar. Don't get the beet sugar. Now, if you have room enough to build a greenhouse for winter, you can grow lots of things. You can you can grow lettuce, um, creases. Creases are really uh, popular up around in the mountains where Gary and I are from. And you can also grow mustard. Now, mustard is another green that's grown a lot and sowed in with turnip grains when it's sowed. You'll have a combination of mustard and turnip grains. And mustard has got a little hot taste to it. And it seasons the greens up pretty good. You can get carrots to grow in a greenhouse. Pop choy. Um, cucumbers, if you've got enough of a place to plant some seeds and mount them in a hill. Um, also, um, all your herbs, you can grow those in, a, in the hot house to season food with thyme, oregano, rosemary, all of that. Gary's going to drop you a link in uh, to these vegetables that you can grow. Be sure that you have the right things to eat. I know my granddaddy said that during the Depression, people didn't have anything and they just ate what they had. And he knew a family who who died. And I said, why did they die? And he said, they starved to death. And I said, you wouldn't starve to death eating bread and water. And he said, no, but you'll die because your body needs nutrients. That's another thing. Maybe you need to buy some vitamins to keep if you think we're going to have a a dry summer and a extremely cold winter you can take gary touched on something about bunker living under the ground and that doesn't go over well for long long periods of time simply because you've got to have sunlight uh there was years ago in the mammoth cave of kentucky it's the most massive cave in the united states They tried to treat TB there, and it was great because it was cool, and they were having pretty good success, but then they began to die, and it was because of lack of sunlight. You do need sunlight. Remember that. Now, um, on your greenhouses, there's easy ways to build it. You can build some. Square, you can build them uh, like a Quonset hut, or you can do the spaceship type thing. Even a real small one will work. And you can start with nothing but just a frame made out of some reclaimed timber and some sheets of plastic. And you can grow your food there. Um, You can also do a hoop house. Um, you get wind hoops. You can build a pretty good size one for about $500. Or you can do um, the $20 one with your pallet boards and stuff like that and just stretch it across. You can do a barn greenhouse, and it's uh, kind of larger and more permanent. You get the plastic um, that comes in sheets, the hard plastic, not the soft plastic. And you can really put one up for that. Now, I want you to remember, just because you got a greenhouse and you got it, the sun coming through or in the winter, you know, you have a lot of snow, make sure it's dirty enough to pass the, um, the heaviness of snow if you have a lot there. Um, and make sure it's warm. You can have a greenhouse and not keep it warm and nothing's going to grow. So you got to have some little way of keeping it warm sort of like a smokehouse like you do when you smoke your your meats um you can do plastic bottles believe it or not 
Uh, you just get you some plastic bottles and you shape, you know, shape them, save them, and put them up, and you can do it that way and save countertops, um, get countertops and put it in, put put them up the plastic countertops, the plastic uh, cutting boards. Does it work? Find somebody that's got a whole bunch of them. Use old windows and uh, use your imagination because you can use anything as long as you can get the sun in, keep the cold out, keep the warm in. Um, they're very, very important to have, um, if nothing more, but for your um, your uh, spices and things. Um, nobody wants to eat plain food all the time. You can, but most everybody likes to eat food that tastes real good. So your spices would liven it up a little bit. Wanted to touch on a little bit of um, foods that you need to hoard. Uh, you need to have a lot. Uh, freeze dried is better. If you don't have freeze dried, you can use. You can get yourself put it up. Just remember to rotate your stock. If you buy it, rotate your stock. Number one, we said uh, water. You can get distilled water or seltzer water. And you want to keep plenty of that a gallon a day just for drinking per person. That's not going to take in for hygiene. Uh, for hygiene, we bought up a bunch of the um, baby wipes and things like that where you can uh, wash off. You might not be as clean as you want to be, but you can wash off until you can do better. And if it if it is summertime and you want to take a bath, please don't get down into the creek and sit down with a bar of soap and a wash rag. Take your water out and don't pollute the creek because somebody downstream might be using the water source too. So be considerate about that. And that's also important to consider for your human waste as well. You want to make sure that you don't, oh, don't yeah, yeah. Set you don't want to have an outhouse near a stream. You want your outhouse way above. Now, I won't use an outhouse, and Gary gets stuck at me. Because when I was little, my uncle had one, and I saw a black snake kind of slithering around and went down in between the, the boards of the outhouse down, and I never would sit down on one again. I ain't taking no chances because be my luck, there'd be a, uh, a snake down there. But, yeah, be sure that you don't have your outhouse near any running water or where it can wash down. Try to put it in a low place but not, not near water. Um, if you have a spring, that's wonderful because that's going to come right out of the, the ground and it's going to be, you can almost bet it's going to be pure. Um now, if you don't have access to an outhouse and you have to go, we got a two, we got a two, two can thing. We have one just for urine, the other for feces. And you can always take that out and you can always, um, have a trench and dig it, preferably far away from where you're going to be staying and away from your water source and bear it cover it up and bury it and the other urine it's not so bad you can pour it as far as that goes out onto the grass it makes the grass really green the other thing that you need to think about is uh, liquid content uh to like pineapple juice vegetable soup it's good look for those that are not so much name brand get your off brands because they're just as good and uh, they will bring nutrition and hydration to you. And you would be surprised in the summertime, especially where Gary and I live, that if you don't stay hydrated, you're going to conk. We don't, we're not used to this cold, but the heat we're used to. And we tend to forget that the heat is as big a killer as the cold is. Um, look for evaporated milk, condensed milk canned coconut milk um, and you can put your coconut milk in your rice and it cooks faster. Stewed tomatoes can be rimmed out and used for juice uh, beef stock, chicken stock 
And be sure you have dehydrated powder milk, whey, and eggs, which we have both. And if it was me, I would get the, if I could afford it, if you can't, you just have to do the best you can on it. But you can buy the uh, those type foods that have a 35-year shelf life. And um, all you have to do is rehydrate it. You can get uh, powdered butter, powdered cheese, too, and it's good. Now, whey um, is good, and you can use that, even the whey powder, after you get it. You can heat the whey powder and make... Uh, and make your uh, quick cheese. It's not going to be as good as aged cheese, but you can. But it, it, it is uh, it's protein. And you want to make sure that you're getting enough carbohydrates along with your protein. Because you don't want the body to constantly use the protein. That's, that's for strength in your muscles, especially your heart. Eggs and powder eggs, I mentioned, you need to get those. And uh, I would like for us to eventually invest into a, a freeze-dried machine. But those things are so expensive. And hopefully they will come down before long where we can afford one. But have all that up because, you know, that that's, that's very good for you too. You need some hard cheese encased in wax. Parmesan, Swiss, Sharp, all that is very, very, uh, very good. And it is, uh, uh, in ca if it's encased in wax, it lasts up to 25 years. And if you don't have it encased, think about buying cheese wax and you can make your own. And it will keep it moist during the aging process. It'll stop the mold. Now, let me stop here just a minute. It wouldn't hurt um, to have some bread, a little mold on it. Put it down in a jar. Keep it a little moist. It'll keep growing because you might not have access to get penicillin. And you can take that. You can take that to mold. A lot of people say, "Oh no, don't do that." Yeah, you can take that mold, rub it on a little cut place, and that's automatic penicillin right there. And on that note, why don't you kind of go off the board here and talk a little bit about sources of antibiotics that are maybe unconventional? We've talked about it before, but well, remind um, folks. Golden seal. That's that's one of the things that's that grows very abundantly in the south. You you, you collect golden seal. Also, mullein. It grows wild here. Uh, you can make mullein tea for chest ailments. One of the best things that I've ever seen in my life to break up pneumonia is keep you some flannel and, and, and get it hot with some uh, fried onions on it and put it on that chest. That's going to open up that chest. You're going to get that stuff up. Um, cedar tea is good. Also, pine needle tea. And you get the grain off the pine needles and you boil it. And it, 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 I tasted some not too long ago at a, at an expedition that I went to that showed different things that you could do. And oh my gosh, it, it was like a drink in the woods. That's the only thing I can do. It had a, it had a earthy, woodsy taste to it. And it is high in vitamin C. Um, another thing is if you can get a hold of some soot. Plano soot that comes off of a fire. And if you've got oil lamps and somebody gets cut, find you some spider web and some of that black soot. Put that soot on your finger, wrap that spider web around it, slap it on that cut, and it's like instant manage. It really works. Um, what else is coming to my mind? I can't think right now. How about, something that I, how about go uh, going to the feed and seed? Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're going to stockpile any antibiotic, please stop, stockpile Cipro. It will come as uh, 
in a great big container at the feed and seed. It's usually a thousand milligram tablet. You do weight ratio to proportion. Okay, if it's a thousand cc, I mean a thousand milligrams tablet for an adult, you would probably take 500 milligrams in 24 hours. You'd have to break it in half. If you didn't want to do that, you break it on in a half, the, the half and a half to a fourth, and you can take that. Be sure you stock up on Motrin, Tylenol. Uh, the feed and seed place has got just about anything you need for cattle. And this is the truth. The same company that makes antibiotics for cattle or dogs or whatever makes the same I mean, for adults, makes the same for the cattle and dogs and whatever. It's the same company. It's the same grade. You're still getting clean medicine. Um, I think I told the story before at this one place. Uh, I was up there, and I saw these people in this black car get out. And I always look. Gary's taught me to look constantly at things. They were dressed in suits. And when they got out, I jumped out and ran around looked at the car, and it was a government tag. And uh, I jumped back in the car and waited. And so when my family came out, I said, what were they doing in there? And they were in there buying Kelflex and penicillin. And now these were federal agents. They had gone in there and had bought it. And I said, why are they doing that? And our family said, maybe they know something that we don't know. So you see, not only us are preparing, other people are preparing. Um. There's, uh, you can get amoxicillin. And listen, if you had got, a, ha, if you don't have access to uh, a feed and seed store, I'm sure you got pet stores around you. Go in and tell them you need some uh, fish cillin for your fish tank. That's something about penicillin to keep from stuff being in the water with fish. You can buy most all that. Amazon's another good place to buy. Just be careful where it's made. Uh, with Amazon, Amazon sometimes has a lot of stuff that comes out of China. Be real careful about taking medicine that's made overseas because they mix everything with it. They don't care. You know, they put metals in with it and everything else. But make sure that it's, it's USDA approved. And you can't go wrong on that. And um, now let's go back down if you've got access, buy some protein bars and some protein drink. It's in a powder. You can always use those. Uh, nuts, uh, canned nuts, canned meats, canned poultry, canned seafood. I'm not too big on keeping seafood around, even if it's canned very long, like tuna or anything like that, because it will... Uh, spoil i was going through rotating our stock not too long ago and i saw where four cans of my salmon had puffed up and i just threw them in the garbage can i'm glad you i'm glad you said that because maybe a lot of people don't recognize what is wrong with a can that is all puffed up if it's puffed it's bad uh get rid of it don't don't uh, even mess with it because it's it's real it's really bad and I that's one thing that we that I that I've learned not to prep so much um, except maybe the fish the gear and I caught and I did kin them in the home kenner and that's uh, that's real good and let me tell you something else too this is getting off of it just a little bit but you can can almost anything you want to. You can can biscuits. All you have to do is bake your biscuits, have some wide mouth jars, put your three or four down in a quart jar, and heat it up real good in the oven. Put your lid on it and your uh, cap and screw it on good and sit it out. And when it pops, you've already got canned biscuits. Now, if somebody would say, why in the world would you can biscuits? Well, you'd can it because you didn't have anything else. I mean, you know, you can eat them. At least you got them. And a lot of people 
up in Appalachian Mountains, especially wives, are canning biscuits because four to a jar is two is a breakfast and a lunch for their husband that goes into the mines to work. It's small. It's easy to get in the uh, the, the metal container they take into the mines. Um, I don't particularly care uh, too much for uh, other things like that as as far as fish, except what I can, because I know when I can it and it's good. And if you put it under, I can it for um, about two hours under 10 pounds of pressure, which is right for our elevation right here. And it's good. And boy, when you get ready to use it, it's just like uh, you can use it all. Even down to the bones, you're going to get the calcium from the bones. Yeah, they didn't mention that you can also smoke fish and meat as well. Yeah, you can do that. And I, if it was me, that's what I would do. I would smoke the meat and the fish, and uh, it will always be good. But now when you do that, after you smoke it and get it get it done, you need to store it somewhere, especially... If you're in a environment where there's no food, people are going to raid you and they're going to try to take what you can, what they can. So I wouldn't say leave anything hanging in the smokehouse. Put it where you are and that way you can protect it. But smoking the fish is good too. Drying fruit's good. The whole nine yards, you know, you can do that and that's really good. I would suggest buying a lot of bullion cubes. Mm, it's got some salt in it, but you can also get unsalted. But salt is very important, too. You need salt. So I would get the salted bullion cubes, and you can drop a couple of those into something to cook, and it'll give it a great flavor. Um, you need to stockpile, like, cooking oil and stuff like that. But you can freeze butter. Or you can um, buy butter and you can get it in a can. Or you can get dehydrated butter and add water to it and it will constitute back to solid. Uh, coconut oil, that is a great thing. That, that is wonderful stuff to have is coconut oil. That's, that makes a good flavoring and it fries real good if you're, if you're going to fry anything or Cooking thing is good. And surprising, new studies have shown that lard is not bad for you, uh, that it's really uh, good for you. Olive oil, of course, that's good if it's organic olive oil. Uh, organic shortening, a lot of preppers stock up in Crisco. The only thing that I would use with Crisco is I'd use it for a candle. Makes an excellent light. All you have to do is stick you a candle in it or a wick it's hard to get the wick in so i would suggest starting off with a candle and burn it and it, it's got so many hours I, don't, I forget how many hours of light you can use with the crisco but you can use it to cook with too um you want to make sure you get as much as you can uh if you're going to get corn oil you want you want non-gmo and 86 percent of of corn grown in the United States now has been genetically modified. Um, and you make, make your own, you know, make your own oil out of pan, out of olive oil or flavored, however you want to. You need to have wheat and flour for bread and pancakes. Uh, you need a lot of that for thickening gravies. If you're going to use gravies uh, or, corn starch but again be very careful about that because you want non-gmos um cereals uh corn and rice cereals now see i don't eat anything corn but i do eat rice cereal and i do eat uh wheat cereal and it's really it's really good for you because it gives you a lot of vitamin e and that boost your immune system along with vitamin C. Um, be sure to get you some wheat germ. Uh, be sure to get magnesium, zinc, vitamin E, vitamin C. You can also use potato flour, 
Now, potato flour can be made from potato flakes, or if you want to forge, uh, go online and look for the wild potato plant, and it's in the family of um, Morning Glory, and they grow wild, and if you pull on the plant, you'll pull bulbs up, wash them real good, you can peel them, and they taste just like a potato. Um, corn is a grain, dried again, non-GMO, because you're going to use uh, a lot of cornmeal for uh, cornbread, uh, cooking, cornstarch, grits. Lord, you can't live in the South without the grits. Got to have popcorn, uh, masa, and you want to eat corn as a vegetable. Uh, corn is very good for you if it's organic. Oats and oatmeal. You need oats and oatmeal. And you need your breadcrumbs and your stuffings uh, to, to use also. And you just save your breadcrumbs. And I just put them all together and then... I kind of air them out and let them dry, and then I just kind of mix it up a little bit. You can always use that to uh, roll something in if you want to give it a little bit more added flavor. Uh, you can also get um, Chef Stable ready-to-eat meals. You can get those from, uh, if I was going to order from anybody, I would order this stuff out of Utah from the Latter-day Saints because they are very health conscious. They use no GMOs. They're very, very ready all the time. They eat soda crackers and cookies, rice. Um, I was very surprised when I read that they tell you to use white rice. And I guess I got to looking at that because um, brown rice, uh, but it takes more cooking time. And it's a little bit more oilier, and it will might go rancid. Pasta, that's real cheap. You can buy pasta anywhere. You need some dried fruit, fruit strips. That's easy to make if you've got a dehydrator. If you've got grapes, you can turn them into raisins. And, of course, your jams and jellies, which I made. Uh, we hardly ever buy. Uh, anything we do our jams and jellies for I barter with that and like I find people who are growing it and I'll do sewing for them especially if they have children and I lay out how much I can do with my time and mine my, my sewing machines or whatever to what uh, they're going to let us have and we barter it out and it works out good Canned fruits, get your canned fruits up, and uh, canned vegetables, beans, nuts and seeds, honey. Honey is very important. Um, don't buy the store-bought honey if you can find somebody locally. We have a man around here who does honey, and we buy the honey from him, and it's expensive. But uh, I think it's $25 a quart. And to some people, some people said, oh, that's cheap to what we would pay for it. And it's kind of high in this area, but it's okay. It's worth it because it's really good. Uh, I have two nieces who have uh, asthma. And as long as they take honey year-round, a little spoonful, they don't have to take any asthma medicine. Don't have to worry about taking breathing treatments. You need to have plenty of salt. Salt. Uh, salt kills bacteria. That's why a lot of um, people use the salt to cure their meats and stuff. So you need some specialty salts, not just your table salt. You need cannon salt and pickling salt. Um, Himalayan salt is really good for you because it's rich in trace minerals, including calcium, magnesium, potassium, copper, and iron. Epsom salts. Uh, it's good for the skin, and it's also good to soak things in. If you got a sprain or uh, something that hurts, Epsom sauce really works well. Sugar and molasses. Again, buy your molasses from somebody that you know that made them locally. All the stuff you get off the shelves, I don't trust it. In grocery stores, 
Uh, sugars, if I buy sugar, I get pure cane sugar. I don't get any um, sh- sugar that's made from sugar beets. Get your spices and herbs. My uh, suggestion is grow your own. And if you can't get it, buy in bulk and um, keep it in jars because you're going to use a lot of spices. Like I said um, a while ago, you're going to need that. Now, I don't know how many of you think about um, condiments, but mustard, mayo. Mayo is not very shelf-stable long, but mustard is. Pickles, relishes. Tabasco sauce is a good one. And let me tell you something. Tabasco sauce, if you have a a migraine headache, if you'll just uh, take a little bit of that and put it on the end of your finger and take it, Believe it or not, it'll lessen that migraine headache. Um, we don't do any soy sauce because it's mostly all made with the GMOs. Worcestershire is okay, maple syrup and, and extracts. Uh, extracts are great to have because you can do a lot with it, like your strawberry uh, extract, your orange, your vanilla. You can make your own vanilla uh, extract as long as you have um, vodka. And you just put your vanilla bean in there and you make your own. Chocolates. Chocolates. Everybody likes chocolates. Be sure that you uh, hoard your vitamins. Get get all the vitamins that you can think. Have that up. Have everybody take vitamins. Be sure to really stay on top of that along with your medication. Be sure you've got at least a month and a half to two months on your regular medications if you need it because it might be that you can't get anything. It might come down to where you'll have to just break into a drugstore at some time when the whole system goes down. Apple cider vinegar. That's very important too. Um, it has helpful benefits. Uh, for it it's good for cuts and it'll set you on fire also apple cider vinegar if you take you uh, a swig of apple cider vinegar and you got a sore throat trust me you're going to dance a jig but i guarantee you that sore throat is going to be 90 percent better the next day you also can take apple cider vinegar and a little oil and salt and pepper and you make a simple salad dressing so apple cider vinegar is the king Vodka. Vodka is very important to have. It's good for uh, cuts, bruises. You can use it as a mouthwash. It'll help dull the pain of a toothache. That's something else. Make sure your teeth are in good condition. Stay on top of that. Um, and really, any kind of alcohol is good to barter with. Because people use it a lot of times for a numbing agent. You know, you've seen the old westerns where somebody breaks a leg. They turn the liquor bottle up and give them a good two or three drinks. And it takes a little bit more than two or three drinks. You might want to give them about a half a bottle and then lay it to them. It'll hurt, but they won't remember it. They might remember the headache when they wake up, but that'll be all. Um, it's good to uh, stop poison ivy. And it'll get rid of uh, flies and mosquitoes. Uh, leveling agents like your baking soda and baking powder and yeast, you need to have that bought up. And last but not least, a lot of people can't live without junk food. We can. But if you want some junk food like uh, Pringles and Cheetos and stuff like that, get you some and buy it up. Just rotate your stock. And uh, that that that'll get you through the cravings, I think. Gary, you got anything you want to add to that? I was going to talk about a little bit of first aid. No, uh, we're we have about three minutes left. So. Uh, okay, we don't have time to go. We'll do this at another time. Yeah, that's there's going. so there's so much, and appreciate <clears throat> appreciate your 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 patience and with all with all that laundry Sorry, list. Sorry, I was so long-winded no no it's okay because it's important it it's impo- important stuff and there's no easy way and it's a little bit like Hal's show 
behind a woodshed, there is no easy way unless you apply yourself to it. And there is no substitute. You know, I mean, a lot of people like, people seem to like to find the easy and painless solution. Well, I'm afraid there isn't one. So, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Grimner said he he wasn't too sure he wanted to get set on fire with <laughs> apple cider vinegar, but it does work well. Even just a, a little sip of it every every day is mm -hmm. not such a bad idea, is it, Judy's been? That's right. Doctors won't tell you, but uh, it kill it keeps strep away. You take your little uh, apple cider vinegar every week. I mean, every every day a little swaller. You're not gonna have a uh, strep throat. It kills strep. Yep, sure enough. Yeah, and there again, we, we have taken a turn on the road. We believe it a, ne a necessary thing to do. Because going back to the introduction, seven years at the outside is not a very long time. And based on the dramatic numbers involved, um, my guess would be it's something that is likely to occur to occur sooner rather than later. And, you know, you tie all this in. You have DARPA, you know, DARPA's throwing out stuff about underground, you know, creating underground facilities, really, which we, when we already know that underground facilities have been around for, at least for the government folks, since the late, since beginning of the late 40s, the uh, original construction thereof. So now, out of DARPA, you know, they're soliciting for private folks to submit plans and so forth. Now, why, if you know, like I say, read the article. It will answer, I think, the questions of why. Okay. And, of course, the weather. And, you know, we hear about all this climate change. We're supposed to get some freezing rain in the morning. Yes. Yep, yep. And there's no, uh, yeah, on the road, even more or less traffic. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> that's, that, that will probably be the case. We'll have to do something about keeping the weeds beaten down, won't we? Anyway, we... Apple cider vinegar. Apple yeah, cider vinegar. Yeah, that's about it for for us tonight, Gigi's Boo. You got anything to end up with? Oh, yeah. Always remember to take the road less traveled. And I love you all big to my heart. That's right. Thanks for joining us this week, <laughs> the first show of 2018, and look forward to seeing you next week on The Road Less Travel with Gary L. and Gigi's Boo and sometimes Atticus if he sees himself in the curio cabinet, <laughs> which fortunately he did not do tonight. Anyway, take care, and we'll catch up with you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>